welcome and all aboard for The Last Caboose, Episode 6. We're sat here at Kananaska Siding, waiting for our logging train to fill up. Uh, we are riding this train out here on the last episode. Um, this episode, we are going to dive in on how we're going to make this um, a little bit more profitable so we can continue our expansion to the west and up to uh, Banff. Um, this is where we've got to play the game uh, to recreate what we have in history. So today is going to be more about playing the game and not so much about the history of uh, the Bow Valley. Um, maybe between this episode and the next, uh, I might end up adding the Bow River all the way to uh, Banff, depending on how the rest of my week looks. But uh, this train is slowly filling up. We've got our uh, carts coming down the hill coming out of the Kananaskis Valley and uh, they are bringing in the logs and I think this is a good opportunity to get us going so let's bring up the uh, the interface and uh, let's take a check and look at everything so what we're gonna do today is we're just gonna optimize everything that we have currently on the go so we can turn this four million dollars into quite a bit more money uh, I think the first thing we want to do is uh, let's repay all the way down to about $800,000. Now that we're left with a loan of 5.5, almost down to our original loan, that'll reduce our um, that'll reduce our interest costs. Uh, the interest in this game is only 1%, so it's kind of minimal, but every little bit helps. Uh, how many more do we need on this train? This should be the last uh, the last one. Now, let's go take a look quickly while we're here. And uh, we've got a line rate on the haulage of 63 and the log freight of 51. Now, we're not entirely sure if that's accurate because this is the first time this train is going to be making its journey. So uh, we'll uh, definitely keep an eye on that. We'll come back to that. But I think let's head down to Cochrane and uh, let's see what we can see here in Cochrane. We look like we're stacking up in terms of tool delivery. We have too many planks left on the station, so we've got to uh, figure out some things here. So we've got our log haulage. It's got a line rate of 116, which means that this will put out half of 116, which is 58. Um, that means our plank freight here has to have a line rate of 58, but it's got 86 because it takes things on the way there and on the way back. So the fact that this is not emptying um, kind of leads me to believe that we are not meeting the rate of the, uh, the sawmill. If we come to our sawmill, it's saying that we're transporting 100% of them. Um, and if we go to that, we're shipping 53, uh, it's going to be difficult to work out unless I split the train. But here, if we look at Cochrane tool delivery, uh, Cochrane demands how many tools right now? They are demanding 33 and we're supplying them 15. So this line here has too few wagons on it. And too few as in one, probably. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the one vehicle and maybe we'll put it up to three and we'll see how that does and uh, if we come down to here let's just check out if there's anybody waiting anything overcrowded we've got 18 people on here and how many coaches do we have on this line uh, manage vehicle we only have two so I think we're going to go ahead and add one more on there uh, it comes out of the depot right there just to make sure that the people are moving around and getting to where they need to be. It may end up that I end up uh, that I split this train into just simply plank haulage and bring back tools on a completely different train. Uh, that may be beneficial. Uh, how are we doing here? We've got 15 people waiting and then if we look at this bus stop we've got quite a few people going on the Prairie Express and that is such an infrequent uh, route. Um, now, I think what we should do while we wait for some money to build up is 
quite possibly let's uh, let's build a bus terminal uh, I would love to build a bus terminal where I'm gonna eventually place my station here in Calgary but uh, I don't know if that's gonna be completely doable right now um, but I think we should rearrange the, uh, the prairie line uh, just so it's a little bit more uh, easy to work out so I think we will go for let's put a large bus stop in here in Okotoks on the edge of town kind of have them avoid driving in uh, as much as possible into Okotoks and we'll do the same in Airdrie, Calgary and uh, I don't think there's a need for it to be huge right now if we need to expand in the future we will at that time and then I think we'll put a bus route in here in Okotoks and a bus route in, uh, in Airdrie as well and we'll link them all together in that way so uh, oof, that looks kind of awful so let's uh, smoothify that just take off the harsh edges let's bring it into something that's more realistic spending money that I don't have and I'm trying to make but uh, say la vie so I th if we go ahead and we look at Okotoks as a whole we're going to have this bus stop here and I think because we're so early in the game and we want to maximize we're not too worried about these making a, a huge profit for us uh, we want people onto our network so that is the plan we're just going to go with a simple route um, circle route here and we're going to go out here and down there and Okotoks line one Okotoks Oak <laughs> I always add the E Okotoks circle root and this is going counterclockwise and uh, let's make this a nice prairie grass color maybe a really blonde yellow and I guess we'll have to get a depot down here to avoid uh, buses and tram or buses driving all the way from Calgary to get out here Ooh, I do not like what they're doing with that road but I do not have the money to dissuade them for doing such things so I think this uh, this would sit quite nicely right on the opposite side of the street here there we go perfect and let us buy I think we can go with three and if we just go with what we can see there we go and then what we want to do is we want to go and grab our Prairie Express we want to manage the line and we're going to take out Ridge Street here and we're going to add a station 4th Street Johnson Street 4th Street Okotoks yep that makes sense so there we go now the uh, stagecoaches will come and we'll collect people from Okotoks in there we're going to do much the same here in Calgary uh, I would like to put this bus uh, in a central location but again also in the interest of keeping it out of the way and off to the side I think we're gonna just put it right beside our uh, oh wow why are you removing those buildings that's odd um, can we not do that hmm well it's gonna remove the building across the street so such is life sometimes you win sometimes you lose uh, now what we're gonna go in and do is we're going to go and take a peek at line one here in Calgary and uh, we're going to remove right after Chestnut Street oh no we're going in that direction so right 
from the station, East Street. Right after that, we're going to make a diversion up there and into uh, Calgary Branch. And then we're going to come out and do the rest of the loop. And I think we can take our Prairie Express, which is coming and stopping here at 4th Street. And we are going to manage the line. And we're going to take out 4th Street here and 4th Street here. And so after Okotoks, we'd like to go to Calgary Branch. And then it will head on to, so it goes Okotoks, Calgary, Airdrie, and then it should come back there. But let's, uh, let's just finish this and then we can move that. Now I'm seeing the perfect place for this to happen here. Right on. Oh, getting all the buttons. There we go. Yeah, I think I wanted to put it on that intersection, but I'd actually like them to continue that. And this is a more central location for this bus stop. I, again, they're not going to uh, remain permanently in these positions. This is also a little, a little bit further out of town and allows us to actually make a nice route in town. Now, Airdrie is growing. Now, I think we're going to help them out here. And we're going to finish that street off. And we're going to upgrade. Oh, no, don't need to. And we're going to go in and we are going to come out from here. We're going to come down here in anticipation that they build there. Build another one here. And here, we'll leave that bus stop right across the street. And uh, we're going to make this a elongated, uh, basically a figure of eight. It is going to encompass quite a few stops and it should probably be split into two lines, but uh, needs must and we only have so much money and we're trying to maximize our money, so here we go. Yeah, 12 stations is a bit too many. I find 8 as the optimal number, but uh, let's go with a deep purple on that one and we will call this one air dream circle root and we are going counterclockwise and there's nothing on that route so we'll just get rid of it for now and I think we will get a depot in here as well a road depot here in the industrial area seems like a good fit Let us buy, I think Airdrie is a little bit bigger here and we've got quite a few places. I think six should be good. And then we're gonna come and manage our line here. So we are going to take away Johnson Street. We go Okotoks, Calgary. And after Calgary, we wanna go to Okoto or to Airdrie. And then after Airdrie, we're gonna come back through and go to Calgary and that should take care of the Prairie Express now the Prairie Express has been having quite a few vehicle or uh, quite a few travelers on it and we have 20 vehicles on it um, ooh, and they're all in very bad condition I think we might just have to live with this until we uh, we actually end up um, getting better vehicles uh, like buses or something like that so that really has split out our um, Prairie Express from just small bus stop uh, bus stops into actual terminal stops and uh, I think that that's a good move forward now if we look here uh, let's look at our line rates here 
Uh, if we look at Airdrie food delivery, it's a rate of 29. Grain haulage is good. Uh, Calgary plant freight, no, we want Okotoks food delivery is 30. And Calgary food delivery is 36. So let's go and take a peek at Calgary. It's getting 20 of 36. Uh, to me, that seems like it's a little bit low, but we don't have much food stacking up on either of these platforms. The question is, is do we have any vehicles, say, heading down to Okotoks that are partially empty? Yeah, so let us manage this line and let's put wait until full because that is a long journey for only a partial. Uh, payout and let's do a maximum stop time of infinite this might block up this intersection here which is very short uh, so we're gonna alleviate that problem oh we may not actually let's see is there any room to extend these there's an ex room to extend this platform by one and we will <laughs> And that is as big as that is ever going to get. Um, let's see, we've got... Now, if I want to look in, I kind of want to see a, one of these. Yeah, see, the Calgary food delivery, I believe we could probably end up getting rid of a vehicle or two on this just simply because they're not favoring this line nearly as much as they are this Airdrie line here. And see, the Airdrie line is overloaded and we're just losing. So let's manage the vehicle on that. We've got 12. Let's uh, mass duplicate them, put 24 on that line. Uh, I know that seems like a knee-jerk reaction, but they just seem to be favoring that line. I'm wondering if the bus stop here that we have or the uh, the dropping point for our food delivery in Calgary isn't catching. No, it is catching everything. So they just seem to be favoring uh, the Airdrie line more than they are the Okotoks line. And uh, that's just how that will be. That's fine. Now here we have a line rate of 164. Uh, we also have a massive amount of vehicles, but you know, we could almost get another 10. I, I'm looking to get another 10, yeah. And that should bring us right up. Now this is going to get quite uh, quite busy in here, right across this bridge. And that is unfortunately the way it's going to be unless for the Calgary food delivery, we can give them another route across the Bow River. Uh, we could give them something up here and bring them more directly into town uh, just to split the traffic. Uh, let us take this road here that we already have. And if we could get a nice country road, doesn't have to be fast. And if we can, We may want to go up quite a bit. And we can get to there and go flat. This is an expensive bridge. I just want to make sure it's nice and straight. And I think just your regular old wooden bridge is perfectly fine. Uh, what are other options? We've got a wooden bridge with white planks on it. Uh, we've got iron bridges. Uh, I like the one with white planks. Just give it a little style, a little pizzazz. Something a little different. And then I think we'll just bring this right on down. Now it seems absurdly straight, um, but coming from this region, everything is absurdly straight. It, uh, it's a, an area in the world that was planned, 
prior to building, so everything is built on a grid out here. Uh, there are section lines in Alberta and that run north and south, and then there are township lines that run east and west, and uh, they split the province into a massive grid, and it's all for farming to maximize that farming land. So here you really wouldn't get these curvy roads. It, I mean, it would be a straight road, maybe with a correction line uh, to deal with the curvature of the earth, but uh, that um, that's not something we're going to fix today. We might fix that in the future, though, just to bring it into a little bit more realistic. Uh, now let's see if our AI has rerouted. Yes, it has rerouted our uh, Calgary food freight. And uh, here we've got Okotoks. It is waiting. And we have just more grain haulage. Okay, perfect. So I think that that's doing well. And look at this. Our tools are just absolutely piling up. And I think what this means is we need to create a new line. Actually, before we create that new line, we need to come in here and we need to pause. Because we need to do some additions here. Now I think what we can do is we'll get out of that mode. Now let's be careful. I don't want to delete the water assets. I have done that and to no end of fun. So we're gonna be very careful using our bulldozer. Um, I think in future recreations, I will wait to add these water assets in until after. Um, oh, I do have some new signals that I downloaded from the workshop. Uh, I just don't know if I loaded them in, into this save game. So maybe uh, on our next one, maybe I'll add them and load up <laughs> unless I somehow delete something. Okay, enough with the bulldozer and making myself nervous. We will go ahead and let's configure this. What we're going to do is we're just going to start adding quite a bit of track here. Um, and we're going to add we're going to add two tracks for a main line in the center. It's going to be a center pass through. And then we're going to add another cargo platform here and now we have quite a bit of room here I think we'll just have to build the land out a little bit it will be what it is and now if we could actually what I really want to do so the that's our main line here and now if I go ahead and I throw in a cargo platform here no, that's not exactly what I want to do either. I do want to add that track. Uh, I will add this track in here, and I'm going to... I think I've got just enough room there to do what I want to do. Uh, and then we want to add this, and we are going to just keep building. It seems excessively large. Uh, as you can see, it's now really terraforming out into the river space. I'm not such a huge fan of that. So I think we're going to leave it there. And because uh, realistically, we only have planks being delivered here. And we've got drop off of logs and uh, construction materials. So with planks and we've got four things coming in and out of here. So... I think we can make do with what we have here now. Uh, in fact, I think we are just given, now that I truly think about it, what we have to uh, work with, I think this will be fine. Now, because this is a sidings, and this is the main line, let's hook up our main line first. Uh, I am not the world's best junction builder. Um, I'm great at looking at pictures of junctions online and then saying, oh, well, that's what I want to do. But uh, 
So we want access from that junction or from that uh, siding onto our main line and then if we follow this through we're going to want access from this side to the other side of the track. Uh, we could actually what we could do because speed does not need to be uh, of issue here is what we could do is let's pull this right out to here and then we're gonna come ahead go ahead and because we have such a small area we're gonna use a double slip switch here so this now will allow this to go this way now the question is what is the speed uh, now on this piece of track uh, the through speed now is 59 so it will slow quite a bit down um, slow the main line down quite a bit but I think at this point in the game 60 is our maximum speed for our cargo or our uh, passenger trains and we can find a better way to make this a uh, little bit quicker in the future um, so I'm okay with that now here that is going to be your platform for the material coming and going to the east and then this we're going to delete this back just a bit and we're going to take our main line and we're going to bring it in here oh what have i done yep and then we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to pull this out, actually. Yeah, we're going to pull this out to here. And we're going to mainline straight by this siding here. So if we pop this guy and this guy. who I thought I deleted that water asset. And here comes the fun bit. Never draw a track right beside it station this is what happens you get to delete everything in the smallest amounts and it's very tedious and cumbersome and we're not going to make any money if we keep it paused so I want to get through this without deleting any of our water assets you can see I'm coming dangerously close um, only one more and here we go perfect now I think Cochrane as crazy as this sounds, is forever going to stay as a single platform. Uh, it's simply, I just don't think it will require the frequency uh, for a double platform. I may be wrong. I'm not entirely sure how quickly this map is going to expand, but I'm thinking it would be a challenge and a fun challenge at that. Oh, look at that. We got one stray piece of track out here preventing our works. There we go. So yeah, I'm thinking it's going to, I'm going to attempt to keep it as one platform. And uh, just, um, just to see if that is possible through uh, the entire game. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and knock that back. This will become the main line at one point, so. We're going to come in here and same thing uh, right now. Uh, I believe actually we could probably get this one. Yeah, 84. That's fairly nippy. And then we can pull this out here. 64. Could we go a little better? Can we do 70? Perfect. And then this brings our main line straight through and past. And if we take it from here, and we bring it back. And when we extend our passenger service, we can certainly uh, move that back on. Now we've got to add some signals back in here. 
Uh, what we want is a one-way signal here. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to want a two-way signal here, leaving the station. And then I'm going to want a one-way signal here. Coming in and blocking that whole thing. And then this piece of track here, we're going to do very much the same thing and bring it in with the double slip switch here. Um, so let's just check again. Here's the speed. We've got 85 and 74. If I put this to a double slip switch, what am I reducing that to? 85, 74, and then 52 crossing. I believe we'll just have to keep an eye on that looks like the inside track we'll, we'll just see <laughs> now who's still having can ask us log freight of course of course you can't we're gonna go manage line uh, we are gonna go to terminal 2 that should solve your problems and let's see if our lines look nice yes they're good there we need to add some signaling in up here just to protect everything uh, properly so if we grab our one-way signal and we're gonna put it up here then we're gonna put one two-way signal leaving this and another two-way signal these aren't necessary they're more just for scenery uh, and looks and I believe we are protected entirely and then our next set of signals is down there yeah oh you know what we don't have is anything holding us in case there's something coming in unless we can consider this signal up here I, I kind of like that actually this signal all the way up here will prevent anything here from coming out but then I'd like a clearing signal um, just to allow the trains to come out uh, quite a bit sooner so let me grab my signals and I want that clearing signal just as we get onto that straightaway there so and then that way this is an entire block so if a mainline train is coming through and just coming straight through it will reserve this entire block so anything waiting on the sidings will be forced to stay on the siding so now we can get that playing and uh, we can take a peek at this now we are going to wait until we get back up into the Cadbury plank or uh, Cochrane and we're going to edit the vehicle at that point so let's just pin this and let's go and take a peek at this and see what kind of rate we have yeah see we are we are picking up and still waiting so I think that that's almost perfect. We've got our Kananaskas log freight at 51, and it showed up and just was waiting for a few minutes, just for the last couple of uh, for the last couple of uh, carts to come in with some logs on it. So I think we're we're looking pretty good on that one. Now, while we're waiting for this guy to come all the way up, how are we doing in our transfers for the Prairie Line? We've got a few on the Prairie Express. I'd like to, yeah, so they are coming back. That's fine. And then this Airdrie, I mean, we've absolutely overburdened it with uh, carts. It's, it's in need of a, a train is really what it's in need of, but uh, the train didn't end up going into uh, it was the Calgary and Edmonton Railroad Company, and it didn't end up going in until, uh, I believe, 1891. So we've got a, a few years, and we're really focused on moving to the west. So, yeah, look at all these log uh, planks haul piling up here. It would be great if we could get a plank train a little more frequent. 
Yeah, we do have quite enough, uh, quite a bit of room to hang over there. So hopefully that guy is going to be just fine. How are we doing in terms of? Look at this conga line of uh, carts here coming back and forth. This also is in need of a train, in desperate need of a train. Um, but like I said, I'd like to do all our branch lining after the fact. Uh, I think in the future. Um, maybe as time goes on realistically we'll see these farms this is actually now pretty much a part of Calgary so what I am gonna do is in the future sandbox mode this and move some of these farms further out uh, out there and then maybe take this farm John Glenn's ranch um, maybe leave it there as historic uh, thing but move something a little further south of Okotoks just to give us a little more train action um, that's again in the future I think those would be great ideas now here we are we're almost in Cochrane maybe if we just speed that up and get him in and uh, hopefully we've got enough money at that point to make a few um, changes and, and even grab a whole new train so uh, let's see I think just want to make sure we might not have the money to do it um, but that being said we have paid off a significant amount of our loan and I'm okay with taking a loan just to get this train in so now if we pause it here we definitely have room okay perfect just wanted to make sure that we've got room now we're just going to wait until he unloads all of his goods and we're going to pause we're going to manage it and we are going to take off all of the box cars now i wish there was an ability to slide this back and forth i've never figured that out i'm not sure if it's my mouse that i'm using or what but uh this is a frustrating way to do it I'm so lucky that I can just see them um, there we go and now if we go to wagons cargo we're gonna add three and I believe if you shift click these they go to the end I'm perfect it's about the same size and uh, we can load that up now we've got 120 so we're going to be taking quite a few more planks each run which is good we may end up having to double this train up here um, but for the time being not necessary now we've got this line one i'm going to go ahead and come down here and we're going to do the ogden yard here and we are going to come into the Cochrane siding and we're going to make this a nice tool color really nice light blue and I don't definitely don't want to wait until full here um, hopefully we just end up catching it so we don't have to and let's call this Cochrane tool freight Of course, I've spelled Cochrane wrong. There we go. Perfect. And let's see if we can afford a train. It's unlikely that we're going to afford anything that I want, but. Grab this guy, I'm gonna make it black. And we're gonna put boxcars on. Yeah, w with three boxcars, we are already <laughs> too much. So I think, uh, yeah, they're 200,000 a piece. So this train's gonna be about three or four million dollars. But in the interest of making money we're gonna spend some money so 
buy a vehicle. Let's see our steam locomotive. Let's get it nice and black. And let's go into the cargo wagons. Uh, let's make these. Let's make these these nice deep red. I believe that's the default color anyway. Let's see. Yeah, they're a little bit different. Uh, let's um, let's grab a few that are. Uh, let's say brown. Add two like that, and now we're at 2.5 million. I think we can add a few more. And let's do oh, I say there wasn't too much cre creativity back then, so let's just do red. Um, boom, boom. And let's look for my caboose. Three million dollars quickly get it cochrane tool freight that's going to come out of the depot here and uh, we're going to cheese the game a little bit here as it comes out we're going to let it get past this switch and then we're going to flip it um, just simply because well I want to maximize the amount of money I'm going to make on this train so come on out look at you can't even tell that we've really painted anything different which is kind of ideal it's nice it's different it's subtly different uh, so as soon as its rear end is past this switch gets that caboose past the last switch caboose operator caboose men will say flip over and yeah definitely all trains just know how to flip like that so what is happening here we have quite the conga line from Airdrie of, well, hopefully those space out because that is super weird. I've never seen that, uh, that come in like that. They must have been all caught up following a much slower vehicle. I can't imagine where, maybe on this main stretch of road, a slower personal vehicle. Who knows? So here we are, we're gonna come in, we're gonna collect um, quite a, all the tools that we possibly can. Um, Calgary Plank Freight, if we manage this line, we are not, yeah, we're gonna unload that. And we can't load any of that, we're gonna load that, perfect. So it knows what it wants to do. And hopefully, What does this say? Some cargo items may be lost because the station is overloaded. Well, they'll either flip over or they will simply disappear into the ether. Um, really nothing I can do about it. Uh, this train right now has 23 of 28 going on there. I wish that these would flip over. It may, it may be doing that or we might just be adding new ones and I'm not entirely sure. Let's hope. So now that we've got that train going, I think let's take this opportunity to repay. We're down to five million and we're definitely gonna go into the red. Uh, how's this little line doing? Simple, not doing anything. Just making us a small amount of money so we can pay for one or two more signals. But every little bit helps. Um, what shall we bring up our lines, our road vehicle? Sorry, our line statistics are here. I take this. Uh, that, that's a vehicle manager. I'm looking for my line manager. It's all lines. Let's arrange them by balance. Calgary Plank Freight. It is losing money, but it should start to turn a good profit now. Uh, Prairie Express. I'm okay with that losing money. Okotoks Circle Route, definitely going to lose money. What's our big earner here? Uh, log Freight. The Log Freight train is, well, it's big earner because it's just delivered. So um, that makes sense. So let's go check out train number one. It must be coming close into Calgary. Yeah, it's passing by its old consist share. We have beat up this 
old Baldwin classes. It's seen better days, but uh, right now we don't have the money to afford the maintenance. So, needs must. Needs must. They'll make do. And, uh, hopefully. Well, let's see. I'm, I'm wondering if that's switching over if we're... Yeah, because we have nothing in storage right now. So... It must be slowly flipping from one platform to another. So hopefully by the time uh, that tool train comes back into town, all that will be flipped over. And uh, we'll be able to uh, make greater profits off of that. Now that we're able to take a few more um, planks. Now look at this. This is just going to overload drastically here shortly. Um, especially with that it would almost be worth it to double up that train um, but maybe at the very end of the episode we do that uh, one thing I would like to look at here as well is uh, getting one more um, we've got construction materials being made right up here and we have everything in place for that but I'm wondering yeah like we have the line we have everything we would just have to add a passing loop in this line where we think halfway is uh, between Cochrane and Kanaskis really somewhere about here we could add a good long passing loop we could almost double double track all of Morley Flats all the way to Kananaskis to here and then just leave this wiggly section as single track and that would more than take care of uh, anything passing although if you did get something here oh you'd be in for quite the wait you'd want to double track the whole thing that's it's a tough call right there well the plank train has made its delivery it would be nice <coughs> to get this plank train up to the other end of the map and possibly duplicate it. Um, what would the cost of that be? Not enough money, I'm, I'm well aware of that. Uh, if I were to just bank something with 119 capacity, buy vehicles, and cargo, we're going to go all the way to 119. That's going to cost me $4.4 .4 million. Well, I'm wondering if we actually get there. Let's see. I don't think we've got any big money earners in on the way now. The, the next cargo train to arrive is this one. So let's, uh, let's make sure that this one here when it arrives in its station let's follow it in and that nice view let's hop on board take a peek see what kind of views we've got here ooh ooh excellent look at those rocky mountains what a wonderful view hmm there we go that's the view I was looking for See if we could get in with the engineer. Take a peek right out his window. Look at that. As we buzz light year across the, <laughs> the Morley Flats here. Oh, it'll be great when we actually get to get into those mountains and take a peek at what's going on in there. I think we'll, that will be next episode. But yeah, we are waiting on... Um, logs but not that many look at that it's we pull up and we wait for one cart to come in um, I'd say that I perfectly uh, adjusted that line rate but really that's dumb luck um, now in that haste have we got this plank freight all the way up there not quite yet, no. 
but we are overloaded on this. So what I think we're gonna do is we got 1.9 million dollars or a loan of 5 million. We're back to our original loan. 2 million in the bank, which means I gotta take out about three million dollar more loan to double up this train. And I think given the distance and the production value here, I think that that's a great idea. I think that we'd be more than uh, more than going to earn that money back. So we are going to take out it's was what about four and a half million. So let's take out a little bit more and let's go down, manage this vehicle, duplicate. There we go. We've got another and while we're thinking of it, let's repay that 500,000. And we've got another plank freight uh, vehicle on its way. That's just gonna boost production to the tool. Look at that, that tool freight is now starting to really ramp up and our tool train is all the way down here. Um, so we could probably, if we get any money in our bank, uh, bank account, we will uh, definitely add to those uh, to that consist there. Maybe make that a little bit longer because right now we're going to be taking uh, 70 and that's not going to be enough. The platform's already got 83 on it um, so I think it would be wise to look at that. That's going to take off and it is <laughs> slowly pulling away. Yeah, and this thing just barely makes it. I wonder what are the details on this. Um, it's in very bad condition, but where? There we go. Power rating poor. Yeah. So it it almost could stand to be double headed. Uh, let's see we look at it now yeah so it's mediocre empty but uh, once we filled it it becomes poor and uh, just for sake of argument I don't have the money to but if I were to double head this uh, and then check out the power rating we are mediocre but we've m less than halved the uh, the time it takes to get to speed on a medium grade so um, maybe in the future we'll double head those uh, obviously with our bank accounts in the state that they are right now we are in no state to double head anything uh, we are simply waiting for all of our big money trains to come in now um, yeah We've got this guy. How's this guy doing? Oh, you know, it almost could do with another wagon. Um, let's see, how many do we have waiting here? 26. I think we're just managing for the time being. Um, I think we've really maximized as much as we can. Now, with that money that I don't have, I would really like to clean this up a bit. Maybe bring this side out a bit, uh, a bit further. But yeah, this, it just kind of irks me. I may end up uh, going ahead and changing this up with one of those freestyle stations. Um, that just might be something that I do in the future. I'm not entirely sure if that's the route I'm going to go quite yet. But yeah, for now, I think we are looking pretty good so I think why don't we oh I would love to hop on that train go westward again um, but you know we've never taken a ride on the Prairie Express heading south do we have or I know we've have taken a ride on the, heading south um, 
let's see we could take a ride around Calgary or we could go find our passenger train hmm I'm just trying to find a good train to pop on right now what's a nice bit of the line you know what right here coming into uh, Calgary I think let's pop on this guy and uh, we'll get ourselves into our customary Caboosman's uh, watch get sat down right here and uh, yeah I think that's been uh, an episode a little bit shorter than uh, the most but as I said we were just uh, managing the the gaming part of the uh, the um, the build through here and uh, once we get oh look at those logs just turning oh man just what a great view from a caboose such a shame it would have been fun to be a caboose just you could watch that all day long but anyway um yeah i think uh, our next one we will uh, get right back into the history and continue moving west i think um, we will reach siding 29 or banff uh, in the next episode uh, if these trains keep coming in and pouring in money, I think that, that would be our our best uh, goal um, and set up that construction material uh, line and uh, I think that would be uh, perfect. So anyway, have yourself uh, a great evening, morning, day, afternoon, and night. Thank you.